Avi Meyer is Northtown Neighborhood News Magazine, a presentation of Sonny Hirsch and myself. They us up on the web at www.ntnm.org. Uh, we're real big on community policing caps24.org. Sonny, in his spare time, is the chairman of the advisory, dis advisory district of the, uh, of the 24th district. And I um, want to thank everybody who was at my caps meeting last night. I chair 2412. We had a really terrific crowd over at Boone School. And our schedule for the year will be coming out shortly. Um, hey, if this is election time and we're interviewing judges, Jewish Chicago cannot be that far around the corner. So, um, you know, keep Jewish Chicago in mind uh, where you're going to, we, we, we pass it out free, over 20,000 copies. We've got a circulation well over 65, 70,000. And um, lo love covering judges. As we always do, and speaking of judges, we have a candidate for a countywide office, somebody we were just sharing boyhood memories yeah. of uh, Chicago sports and um, really, really great times in those days, even if we didn't have winning teams, yeah. and that would be <laughs> Tom McGuire. How it's are you? It's a pleasure. Thank you. First of all, my pleasure. And uh, what vacancy are you running for? I'm running for Richard Elrod's open spot. Ah, okay. The former... Uh, he was the sheriff, and then... Right, now send it to the judge. Big, big shot guy around here, and he didn't live far from here. Really? He's he, a he big was, guy. He was actually at, um, if I'm not mistaken, he was in a high rise building around Devon and uh, Skokie Boulevard. Okay. Wow. Something like that. It might have been Pratt and Skokie Boulevard, but no, I. And of course, um, his, fa his father was the uh, ward committeeman of, uh, in the Jewish neighborhood on the Old West okay. Side. So he's like a legendary Jewish political figure. Okay. Well, he was a great guy. I met yeah. him a while ago. No, and a very distinguished judge and right. uh, somebody who, who, who earned very high honors when he was on the bench. Right. So uh, in, in, in any event, uh, tell us about your background. Um, I grew up around Grand and Ashland. Um, I went to Gordon Tech High School. Um, from there, um, I went into the Navy. I was in the Naval Reserves. Um, from the Navy, I went to work for Ameritech, where I was in the Illinois Brotherhood of Electrical Workers 165. Um, ultimately, was promoted to a supervisor in, in the phone company. And back then, it was Illinois Bell, and then ultimately, it changed hands after divestiture and went to Ameritech. Um, I went to night school at DePaul um, while I was a supervisor. And then I met my wife. Um, she came here on a J-1 visa. And because she was here on a J-1 visa, we had to relocate to Meadville, Pennsylvania. I spent two years in Meadville, um, went to Allegheny College to uh, try and get my undergraduate degree. Um, and my wife ultimately came back to Chicago, and I came back with her. And we have two daughters. Um, I ultimately got my undergraduate degree from DePaul University, and then my law degree from DePaul University also. Very good. And how long have you been practicing law? I've been practicing law since uh, 2000, so for 15 years. During that time, um, I clerked for Judge Bertino Lampkin, who's now running for the appellate court. Um, and then I also was a staff attorney for Judge Paul Beeble, who was the chief of the criminal trial division. Um, oh. And during that time, I did post-conviction. I did the research for post-convictions. Um, I also did the background research for a number of cases um, for the judges who were at 26th in California. Wow. Yeah. So, no, that sounds like you've got good experience along those lines. I, I think so. And after I left the uh, chief judge's um, position as a staff attorney, I then went to work for the state's attorney's office. And I did that for a little over, uh, going on 11 years. And during that time, I started off in traffic. Um, where I did DUIs and suspended license tickets uh, and other minor traffic offenses. Um, I then went to the Juvenile Justice Bureau where I did abuse and neglect cases, which were very sad in nature, but I think in a lot of ways um, it prepares, prepares you for seeing some of, I mean, what goes on at 26th in California. I then left the um, Juvenile Justice Bureau I was transferred to the misdemeanor courts at the second district in Skokie. Um, I then went to felony review, which is the unit in the state's attorney's office where we go into various police stations, look at um, cases that the police have arrested people on, and determine um, whether or not there's sufficient facts and evidence that the police have gathered 
um, in their investigation or whether or not they need to continue on and then approve the charges that or um, reject the charges that the police are looking for. And then from there, I went to Branch 66, to the preliminary courts um, at the, the various branch courts. Um, I was then moved to Markham, the, the, the sixth district, where I was in the felony courtroom. Um, I was there for approximately 18 months, was transferred back to Skokie, again in a felony courtroom, and then ultimately I left, or I went to 26th in California, where I was in Judge uh, um, Porter's courtroom, and then ultimately I retired, or I left the state's attorney's office three years ago, and now I'm in private practice. Oh, very good. What kind of uh, cases do you handle? Right now, I'm primarily um, focusing on criminal defense cases. Um, DUIs. Oh, so you get to see things from both sides. Uh, right, exactly. <laughs> and that's, I think that's um, the benefit of starting off in the office and being a state's attorney and then moving over to the other side and being a defense attorney because I can see it from a state's attorney's view and hopefully I'm giving my clients the best defense there is, or at least that's the way I look at it. And I try to work, um, again, to give my clients the best defense that I can. No, that makes a lot of sense, definitely. So now you're running for judge. I mean, um, you, it's, the filing time isn't yet. How are you doing with your petitions? Um, I think I'm doing really well with my petitions. I believe um, I have approximately 20 people who have volunteered. Wow. Right. That's um, impressive. And... I was thankful that um, I have a lot of friends and family who are willing to go out and do that. Um, so uh, hopefully I get on the ballot and then it's full speed ahead. No, definitely good luck on, on that score. So, um, are, you, so uh, are you campaigning right now? or You know, I've been going to a number of the um, political events just trying to get my name out there because um, when I first decided to run, um, and to, to be blunt, I didn't decide to run until a number of people approached me and said that I had a good temperament to be a, a good judge. And I think the important aspect of being a judge is being a good listener and, you know, recognize that people generally don't want to be in a criminal courtroom. And being able to, to listen and, and just... No, it's important, and you know, the, I, I read all the bar reviews from all the various associations, and one of the first things almost all of them mention, especially the better bar associations, is whether a person has judicial temperament or not. Right. And uh, yeah, that's so just so important. You know, it, it's funny because um, as like right now, we actually have three different judges here, right. with three different people running for judge, and you get to hear all these conversations, and every once in a while, I see somebody who. He has the worst temperament in the world and the worst judgment, and you wonder, oh my gosh, I sure hope they don't get elected. Because right. mm. I, mean, mm. I can never understand, um, being a judge, I mean, in my opinion, when we were talking about sports, yeah. my opinion, my, my analogy is that a judge is an umpire. I mean, you call him as you see him. And, you know, you have the rules of evidence, and then you listen to the facts that are presented at the uh, during the trial, and then you you either say you know the the evidence is admissible or it's not admissible, you know, and um, move on. But to to be condescending, I never understood why a judge would do that. No, and it it really is not the right thing to do. And it, thank God it's pretty rare. Actually, I think there's, right. there's a decent quality of judges overall and judicial candidates. Right. Um, at this point, we've got to start wrapping up. I want to thank Jeff Stein very much for bringing you to my attention. And hi, Jeff, how you doing? You would have made a great alderman of the 50th Ward. And now we got to settle for what's-her-face. Um, do you have a website? I do. Um, it's mcguire4judge.com. And it's four, F-O-R, not... And McGuire is... M-C-G-U-I-R-E, for, for judge.com. Yeah, no, that's the usual spelling, but I know that there's other McGuires that it's, spell it slightly differently. This, this <laughs> but, is fun. Listen, thank you very much. Oh. I appreciate you're here. Good luck in the election, and you're welcome to come back on and let us know how you're doing uh, in the election before it's over. Oh, I appreciate it. And thank you for everything. Thank you for the opportunity. My pleasure. Thank you. All right.